Praise be Jesus and Mary. In today's first reading, taken from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, the apostle at one point says, Through faith you are all children of God in Christ Jesus. He says, Galatians 3, 26. There is uh, some confusion today in some theological circles. At times we'll hear it said that everyone is a child of God, uh, or you're all children of God, referring to a group of people among whom there are Catholics and other Christians, but also atheists and Muslims and Jews and pagans, etc. Theologically speaking, saying that everyone is a child of God isn't correct, is not correct. What makes someone a child of God is what St. Paul says in that verse, in verse 26 of Galatians chapter 3, faith in Christ, and also what he adds in the next verse, verse 27, when he states, quote, for all of you were baptized into Christ and have clothed yourselves with Christ. So those two things go together. There's faith and there's baptism. That's what makes someone a child of God. If someone is a non-believer or they aren't baptized, we can say that potentially they're a child of God, but actually they aren't. So potentially, yes, actually, no. Or someone might call a, a non-believer or a non-Christian a child of God in an improper sense. Not in a proper sense, in an improper sense. But in reality, the only way to enter into God's family, to be adopted by God as his son or daughter, is through faith and baptism. So faith and baptism, again, go together, just like Jesus and Mary go together. You can even say just like peanut butter and jelly go together. Uh, it might not be as profound an illustration, but for someone that might help. Uh, what God has joined together, our Lord said, let no man separate, right? Matthew 19, 6. That includes those two gifts of faith and baptism. Just to drive the point home, you know, everyone born into the world and all children also conceived in the womb are created in God's image and likeness as Genesis 1, 27 says, but being created in God's image and likeness and being a child of God are not synonymous. They aren't the same things. To all who received him, meaning Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, says the apostle in his prologue, the apostle John in John 1, 12. And he says in his first New Testament letter, he says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. 1 John 5, verse 1. And that word, again, believe, that the apostle uses there in the Greek, uh, the original text, it's pisteo, which we've commented on many times. It means on the one hand, yes, to believe intellectually. Yes, I believe. Uh, but it also means at the same time to trust God and entrust yourself to Jesus Christ. Belief means I do what a believer in Christ does, which includes being baptized as a first step. You must be born of water and the Spirit in order to enter the kingdom of God, Jesus tells us in John 3, verse 5. And then he says at the end of St. Matthew's Gospel, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Matthew 28, verse 19. And the Catechism says at number 12, 13, it says, quote, holy baptism is the basis of the whole Christian life, the gateway to life in the Spirit, and the door which gives access to the other sacraments. Through baptism, we are freed from sin and reborn as sons of God. For those who are little children, as a side note, you know, the faith of their parents or their sponsors substitutes for the child's own profession of faith because they don't have the use of reason when they're a little child, but the child still is baptized with water and the Spirit. Again, so being a child of God is not automatic, and for people who speak improperly regarding this issue. Uh, maybe it wants us to we want to pull our hair out sometimes, but uh, we should correct them if, if it's necessary or if we can or if it's even wise to do so, but we need to do it in a kind way. 
course, uh, remembering what the Apostle says. 2 Timothy 2, 24, 25, he says, The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, forbearing, correcting his opponents with gentleness. With gentleness. So we can know the right thing to say, but we should make sure we ask Our Lady uh, to help us to say it in the right way. Right? Uh, or at times to remain silent, if that's even better. You know, I tell people uh, often, he says, I say, you can be right, but not Christ-like at the same time. Right? So I can be right in what I say, but maybe in the way I say it or in the timing, it's not what God wants. Uh, so we have to be careful about that. So that being said, we'll move on to the last point that we'll make regarding today's first reading, which is this, that being clothed with Christ or baptized into Christ, as St. Paul says, actually transforms our identity. It literally changes who we are. Uh, St. Paul boldly proclaims, Galatians 3.28, he says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. He says, let's just look briefly at those three distinctions he makes. First distinction, there is neither Jew nor Greek in Christ Jesus. For well over a thousand years, the Jews rightly considered themselves favored by God above all nations and peoples. We read, we read in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 4, 7, it says, for what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him. Now, for St. Paul to proclaim that the religious preeminence of the Jews no longer exists in Christ was, to many Jews, really the height of audacity and religious subversion. He was a subverter, St. Paul. It's one of the reasons why they and the Judaizers, why they had such a great hatred toward the apostle. Faith in Christ actually makes us a new creation, St. Paul says, Galatians 5. 15, and it's equally accessible to both Jew and Greek, to Jew and Gentile alike. Second distinction, St. Paul says, there is neither slave nor free person in Christ Jesus. That distinction between a slave and a free person was actually fundamental to the entire organization of the Greco-Roman world in the first centuries. Uh, to be a citizen of Rome, for example, in the time of Christ, was considered a great honor and a great privilege. You can see that, for example, in the movie Ben-Hur. At a certain point, Pontius Pilate offers Judah Ben-Hur, uh, tells him you've now been made a citizen of Rome. That's considered at that time being the, at the height as far as going from slave to citizen of Rome. Uh, free persons enjoyed a lot of political and civil rights that the slaves didn't have. To deny the distinction be between a slave and a free person as St. Paul does here was just as subversive as denying the religious distinction between Jew and Gentile. In 1 Corinthians 7, verse 22, the apostle says this, the slave called in the Lord is a freed person in the Lord, just as the free person who has been called is a slave of Christ. So St. Paul says that God operates on a whole different standard than the world operates, is what he's saying. In saying these things, St. Paul's not, not acting as, is not acting as a social reformer who wants to correct injustices. His vision and his perspective of things is actually much deeper than that. He's saying again that your whole identity as a person changes because you belong to Christ Jesus. And from God's point of view, the civil status of someone in the Roman Empire has zero relevance uh, since those distinctions don't exist in the kingdom of God. From God's point of view, it doesn't make a difference. So we're all spiritual brothers and sisters now uh, in Christ Jesus. That is the focus of the apostle. Lastly, and most radically, St. Paul says that there is, quote, neither male nor female in Christ Jesus. Genesis 1, 27, we just cited that a minute ago, and we were created in God's image and likeness. It says there that God created man, male and female, right? St. Paul says there is no more male and female, he says here. So uh, 
Say in the first part, St. Paul upsets the Jews, saying there's no more Jew or Greek. Then he upsets the Romans, saying there's no more slave or free man. Now we ask, well, is he trying to upset God? Uh, he's obviously aiming for God, right? Uh, saying there's no more male and female. No, he's not doing that. And he's not advocating gender ideology or denying the differences between the sexes. What he's doing again is getting us to look at a deeper level uh, on a deeper level, look at life, life on a deeper level, which what matters above all else, again, is belonging to Jesus Christ, to being in Christ Jesus. For then he says, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, he says at the end of that verse. So once we are baptized into Christ, the religious differences, whether Jew or Gentile, those disappear. Civil differences, whether you're free or a slave, that disappears as well. Even sexual differences, whether one is male or female, they, so long, so to speak, they no longer exist uh, in the way that St. Paul is speaking. All of these differences, what he's saying is they take a back seat to being united to Christ. Uh, now the most important reality that we have is being an adopted son, son or daughter of Jesus Christ. Everything else is secondary. Uh, that's what's most important. That's what the apostle is trying to get us to focus on. Focus on oneness in Christ, on belonging to Christ, on being a new creation in Christ, on living in Christ, on living for Christ. That's what matters most. Again, everything else is secondary. Focus on who you are in Christ, not on what you do and not on what others think or say about you. Focus on what God says about you. What does God say about you? Well, for example, in Isaiah 43, 4, he says, you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you, says the Lord. Uh, claim that as your most important identity. Everything else is secondary. If Catholics actually embraced their identity as children of God and lived out their baptismal promises, it would resolve so many problems in the church and in our society and in the world for that matter. It would, and it would also draw many other people into the fullness of faith. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it, we heard Jesus say in today's gospel in Luke 11, verse 28. That's what we need to do. And it begins with the embracing the truth of who we really are in God's eyes, embracing our true identity. May Our Lady help us to do that, help us to embrace our identity as her sons and daughters so that we can live in the freedom and the peace that comes with being a true child of God. Praise be Jesus and Mary. <laughs> Oh,